In this video, we will discuss the location and radiation of the AV valve murmurs. Generally speaking, the AV valve, mitral and tricuspid valve, stenotic murmurs are diastolic and regurgitant murmurs are systolic, but there are variations. Mitral stenotic, mitral regurgitant and mitral valve prolapse murmurs are best heard in the left fifth intercostal space or wherever the apex beat is. So let's discuss the mitral stenotic murmur first. So what happens in mitral stenosis that decreased mitral orifice size in mitral stenosis impedes the blood flow from left atrium to the left ventricle because it's a communication between the left atrium and the left ventricle. So this causes increased back pressure on the left atrium first and pulmonary circuit, right atrium and right ventricle. So what are the findings on inspection? There is an enlarged or a prominent A wave and a wide descent. Why in mitral stenosis there is prominent A wave and a wide descent? A wave is due to vigorous right atrial systole because of the back pressure from left atrium to the pulmonary circuit and to the right atrium. It causes A wave because of pulmonary hypertension associated with tricuspid stenosis and a gradual pressure decline after mitral valve opening causing wide descent. There is increased LA pressure. Left atrial pressure is increased in mitral stenosis. In severe mitral stenosis, left atrial pressure of 25 millimeters of mercury is required for normal cardiac output. So what are the effects of increased left atrial pressure? Number one, dyspnea and in severe cases, orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Number two, hemoptysis with and without pulmonary hypertension. And why does it occur? Due to rupture of pulmonary bronchial venous connections. And number three, thrombi originate in the left atrium. Incidence of emboli is 10 to 20 percent more in atrial fibrillation. Now palpation in mitral stenosis. There is enlarged right ventricular tap at left sternal border and a diastolic thrill at the apex. So why is there an increase in right ventricular and diastolic pressure and volume? In severe mitral stenosis, pulmonary arterial pressure is elevated at rest and increases further in exercise, causing elevation of the right ventricular and diastolic pressure and volume. So three heart chambers are affected in mitral stenosis. Left atrium, right atrium and right ventricle. Left ventricle diastolic pressure and ejection fraction remains normal in mitral stenosis. There is a diastolic thrill at the apex. Now heart sounds in a mitral stenosis. First heart sound and P2 are accentuated. Increase first heart sound and P2. There is an opening snap followed by a diastolic murmur at the apex. So there is an opening snap, first sound accentuated and opening snap. This is the second heart sound, this is opening snap on expiration at the apex. Then it's followed by a diastolic murmur at the apex. The shorter the duration between this opening snap and the murmur, the severe the mitral stenosis. So if the distance between this opening snap and the start of the murmur is short, condition is severe. The murmur is increased by exercise. Does systolic murmur occur in mitral stenosis? In pure mitral stenosis, a systolic murmur may be heard. Now tricuspid valve murmurs. Tricuspid valve stenotic and regurgitant murmur are are best heard at the left lower sternal border and at the Ziffy sternum. Tricuspid stenotic murmur may have an opening snap like mitral stenosis and it's followed by a diastolic murmur at the left lower sternal margin and the Ziffy sternum. This is the tricuspid stenosis diastolic murmur mid to late diastolic and it has a preceding opening snap. Tricuspid stenosis almost always occur in the presence of mitral stenosis. So which chamber is enlarged in tricuspid stenosis? There is an enlarged right atrium, distended neck veins and giant A wave because tricuspid valve is the communication between the right atrium and the right ventricle and stenosis causes back pressure on the right atrium. Opening snap is occasional and is is followed by the diastolic murmur at the left lower sternal border. Tricuspid stenosis murmur is increased on inspiration and decreased on expiration and on valsalva maneuver due to decrease in tricuspid 
blood flow. Why there is distended jugular veins and giant A waves in tricuspid stenosis? Tricuspid stenosis impedes right atrial emptying during diastole causing distended jugular veins and giant A and V wave. They are also occur hepatomegaly, jaundice and cirrhosis. Now tricuspid regurgitation. So the murmur is at the same point in the left lower sternal border as that of the tricuspid stenosis. It's a blowing holosystolic murmur along the left lower sternal border marked right ventricular dilatation and pulsations along the left parasternal border and severe right ventricular failure so there is right ventricular failure right ventricular dilatation and pulsation and a holosystolic murmur along the left lower sternal border tricuspid regurgitation leads to pulmonary hypertension and right heart failure i already told it leads to pulmonary hypertension and right heart failure distended neck veins with prominent Y, blowing holosystolic murmur along the left sternal border, marked right ventricular dilatation, pulsation, and a severe right ventricular failure. The murmur, like tricuspid stenosis murmur, is also increased on inspiration and decreased on expiration and on well salva maneuver.